this episode of Café de René has been brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, the number one choice for men's below-the-belt grooming. Featuring the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0 with a built-in LED light, ceramic blade for a closer cut, and also completely waterproof. To get that, but also including the rest of the package, including your ball deodorant, t-shirt, free boxes, weed whacker, please head over to manscaped.com, use the code CAFE, not only will you get all that, you will also get free shipping and also 20% off. So yep, please, head over to Manscaped, use the code CAFE, and your balls will thank you. Bonjour, welcome to another edition of Café de René. I am the fourth wheel today, James Dunstall and René. You've brought not one but two great guests and a bit of a re reunion tonight. Yeah, this is a very special episode because we have uh, the two, my two favorite Spirit Squad members. <laughs> Three. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take we that. Have, we have Mike Mondo and Johnny Jeter joining us tonight. What's going on, boys? Not much, man. Just uh, living the dream. Living the dream, eh? Kicking Mondo? it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Made it happen. So you guys have a, a real inspiring story because you you two guys went to OBW. That was in Louisville, Kentucky. But you guys weren't contracted. You guys went there just chasing the dream, right? Yeah. You want to you start, Mondo? You want me to start on that one? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, pretty much uh, started from the ground up down in Louisville, Kentucky. Before I got invited down to the OVW tryout camp, I probably had about eight months experience training here on Long Island. And I uh, saw an ad on the website and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go give it a shot. So I went down there for a week. And uh, that's when I first met you, Renee. Uh, Jeter, I don't think you were there yet. I think you were still in the beginner's class. But you were signed shortly thereafter. And, um, yeah, man, I just freaking gave it all I got. I remember Dr. Tom being down there, Jim Cornette, um, all the contract guys were down there. Uh, and, yeah, it was just a really good experience. And freaking long behold it, freaking I got a call from Jim Cornette a, week, a couple of days after, you know, the week trial camp, invited me to come down there and, uh, you know, pursue a dream and train in the, the advanced class with contract guys. And it was just an opportunity. I figured, you know, I definitely can't pass this up because being in the WWE was always like one of my dreams since I was a kid. And I knew that was the place to be, OVW. And I knew I wasn't going to get a better first-class education down uh, than in Louisville. So I packed up my bags, uh, got a job, and uh, pretty much my life was just filled with just wrestling and, uh, you know, working at the restaurants and stuff like that to support myself. And it was just a really good uh, journey and uh, definitely one of the best times of my life. Wouldn't take that back for anything, you know? And the journey began and that's just how it went. So there's much more after that, but that's pretty much the premise and the basics of it. Jeter, you want to take it? Yeah, quick question. You, when you came to Ohio Valley Wrestling, did you did you go to the old day, uh, arena in Indiana or did you start at the one in, in uh, what is that, I think? Jefferson or the one in Kentucky. I forget that what road it was on. But. Yeah, I started Shep the new Shelby one. Shepherdsville Road, I think. You start the new one. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. The we, new one. I didn't have that uh the experience in the in Indiana. You know, the old dungeon. Yeah, I remember when that place <laughs> opened, we helped uh that place was a dungeon. That place was like right out of Rocky. There was no heating, there was no air conditioning. So when you're training in the winter, it's fucking cold. When you're training no you know, in summer, like, right? Uh, I don't remember there being a bath. Maybe there was, I don't remember, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, long story short, uh, right after nine 11 happened, I moved to Louisville, lived in some dude's basement in Audubon park, worked at Chili's six or seven days a week. I think everyone worked at Chili's, uh, at some point, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 
but yeah, no, I wrestled there for, uh, in the, in the, um, beginners class on Saturday with Dinsmore. And I feel like practice never really started until after practice was over, because at that point, <laughs> that's when like Conway would come Cena, Dinsmore, all those guys. And they would work with like cage Magnus and I, um, this was in the old Indiana one. Um, it was an old civil war fort, actually, they turned into a wrestling arena, but, uh, yeah, we trained there. And then, uh, I ended up going to a trial camp in HWA, uh, they told me my wrestling was good, but I wasn't big enough. Um, uh, I think I was 185 at the time. So I just, uh, learned how to work out and, uh, <laughs> got to about <laughs> 205, uh, shredded and, uh, and, got your- signed. <laughs> and shredded. Uh, yeah, but, but at that, but, at, but at that point, I think, yeah, we, we helped open up the, the, the one in, uh, Shepherdsville road. Um, and, uh, I think it was my feud with Canyon that actually helped get me, get me signed at that point. But, um, but yeah, no, that, so yeah, that's how we got going. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could remember hanging out with you in your apartment. Canyon was down there. Yeah. And, uh, he was there specifically to help. I remember him telling me, I'm here to help, help Jeter. Uh, he he was he was cool man i think uh and again at that time we weren't signed cage magnus or i and uh right. you'd think a wwe guy we, we watched growing up man you know he would be working with the the signed guys but uh he wanted to spend time with cage magnus and i and, and shan o'hare actually and uh he'd just be at watching tape and i think he liked the idea of uh of us being inspired to be there we weren't signed we were we were working double shifts six or seven days a week like we just we love yeah. wrestling that's why we were there and i think he enjoyed um watching tape with us and educating us staying after practice and working with us um and yeah. uh, he just was a stand-up dude and i had some of the best matches of my career with canyon he was incredible yeah my first dark match was against ken oh really yeah <clears throat> yeah sure was who better <laughs> 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 who better cage chris cage does a spot on uh canyon impression every now and again Ca- uh, chris he cage will call spot on everything impression he just he does, does impressions oh yeah he's, he's so good <laughs> he'll call me and he'll be like hey what's up gita like he'll just do a whole promo in canyon voice and i'm like oh my god that's hilarious he'll do arn who else does he do he does a, he does a lot of different different people but you can do yeah. anybody pretty much he did yeah. Shawn michaels pretty good he did Shawn sure. michaels yeah. So for the fans, for the fans who don't know, his name was Kalen Croft, right? right. In the WWE. Yeah. Kalen, Kalen Croft, yeah. Kalen Croft. He was he was the Dude Busters tag team, which is straight out of Johnny Ace's fucking creativity right there. Yep. And uh, uh-huh. yeah. Oh yeah. So so, <laughs> so let's keep going. Like you guys finally get signed. Did you guys get signed around the same time? Uh, when did you get signed? I got signed uh, April 2003. Um, okay. actually I got signed right after, uh, and I was out all night partying <laughs> I came home. and then Magnus goes up. Magnus was Muhammad Hassan, by the way. And, uh, and I don't know if he'll probably hate me for telling the story, but he, he, him and cage went out in the living room to get stoned and watch TV at like seven in the morning. They didn't even try to even get any sleep. I went in my bedroom to try to get some sleep and, and Dr. Tom called me and he's just like, hello, this is Dr. This is Johnny there. This is Dr. Don Pritchard with world grossing entertainment. You know, how would you like to work for World War? I, I, I thought it was a rib at first, but uh, after we had that conversation, I went out and was like, I saw Cage and Magnus. And if you could imagine, imagine, I don't know if you ever went to our Meridian Point apartment, but we had this couch and then like a recliner and then the TV opposite. And Magnus was just sprawled out on the couch with an orange Syracuse shirt on, some Adidas pants with the white lines. And I can see his, 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 his <laughs> eyes are just completely bloodshot blitz. And he looks at me with this shit eating grin on his face for no reason. <laughs> and I was like, I just got signed. He's like, congratulations, dude. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then Cage was like, that's fucking awesome, Jeter. You know, <laughs> like just doing that. It just was surreal. But yeah. Right. But yeah, April 2003 is when I got signed. When did you get signed, Mondo? Yeah, I got signed in, uh, I want to say it was 05. The squad started in 06. And uh, it might have been in 04. But anyway, yeah, there was no real plans for like them ever hiring me, and I uh, know it was always it was always a rough top, you know, uh, clawing my way to the top and try to get signed, and it just wasn't happening. I know Jimmy uh, Cornette was pushing for me to get signed. Danny Davis was getting pushing for me. Lance Storm, he put me in charge of the uh, non contract um, class. They go train them. They, they try to put me in all the right positions to get hired. Right, I, just I remember happen. that. 
But, you know, like in this wrestling business, a lot of it's right time, right place. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what happened. Tommy Dreamer came into office, took over for... Uh, was it what did my, was it Mike Bucci before him or after? Oh him? yeah, I know it was Dr. Nova. Tom, Nova. I think it yeah. was Bucci, yeah, Nova Bucci, and then I think it was uh, uh, Tommy Dreamer after that. But I was always a fan of the uh, the Giant Killer Mondo. I, I even watching oh, yeah. some of those old matches, you coming out with the helmet and just you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Jimmy Cornette creation, man. Giant Killer good, Godzilla was good Mondo. Stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, man. man. I love it. Long story short, when Dreamer came in charge and all, that's when uh, he got five, you know, uh, five favors or whatever. And that was one of them. I know Joey Mercury was another one, Mike Taylor, Danny Inferno, and uh, I think it was Seth Skyfire. And we all got hired on the same day, you know? So, and uh, I did get ribbed too as well about getting hired. I know uh, Danny Davis sent me back to home to go get something or whatever like that, which they didn't even need for the show. And then I could come walking in, he starts cursing me out. Danny was always ripping me, man, busting my balls. He was ripping everybody, yeah. He yeah, was, I yeah. know. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you stupid, you know, goddamn cocksucker, freaking every F bomb that there is, no one demand. But let me be the first to congratulate you got a WWE contract. And I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, you know, <laughs> like it finally all the hard work paid off and everything. It was really cool. I remember so, he ri- he ribbed you a lot, like oh, <laughs> it, yeah. publicly in front of everyone. Like he he loved. I I think that it, it was endearing. I think he was doing that out of love for sure. Yeah, one time he threw a TV at me actually because uh, we were working at a house show, and uh, endearing. He was working on the, the heartthrobs, <laughs> and we did a sunset flip spot where I pulled the pants down. Apparently, I killed the town, or you know, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I was really really sad, <laughs> man. Yeah. So I remember he's like, I wanted to talk to you. He fined me $1,500, threw a TV at me and Roselli. And it was just, oh, man, it was chaos. But uh, luckily, I think you forgave me that. Thank God. Kill Sorry, the Dan. town. Yeah, <laughs> kill the town, man. Yeah. Love it. So wow. This is myself. <laughs> so, okay, so let's talk about the whole Spirit Squad thing and uh, how it came about. And, uh, yeah, just talk me through it. You well, take my go. You go for it, Monica. Yeah, man. I'll just say, like, first and foremost, it was the Vince McMahon idea, and I think they originally wanted to have like four guys in it or three, and uh, I knew Elijah Burke was supposed to be in there, and uh, he actually turned down the idea, and that actually opened up two spots, which me, you, and uh, you and I, Jeter, I think we kind of got in after that. Yeah, were but, we orig- uh, were we originally not supposed to be in it? No, originally it was supposed to be Don, Demeth, Elijah, and Mitch. And uh, with Elijah not taking the deal, um, I know they told you to cut your hair. And for me, they told me to look, look like Nemeth. So I threw some highlights in my hair. And uh, <laughs> long be know it, freaking, we got uh, we're taking cheerleading lessons. Remember going to the cheerleading school? We're trying to learn all this stuff on the fly, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, 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 well, well, the cheerleading school was more like going to like a gym gymnastics place and trying to learn how to tumble and all that bullshit. Yeah, we had to like learn yeah. that stuff from the ground up, man. We couldn't do any of that stuff from the beginning. Dude, I remember you know? those the, the production agent, that one chick who was like literally ordering us around, making us do that Royal Rumble. Like, oh, that was at TV. Yeah. That was at TV. Yeah, that was a different. But I just remember like. They're oh, you guys got to flip into the ring, have Mitch go in the middle, and you guys hold sides and flip in. And I remember going, like, I can't fucking do that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, so what are you having like, me do? I fell like 90% of the time. <laughs> I, remember, I remember, like, before the show, it's like practicing, like hitting the trampoline, jumping, like, we were like just fearless, man. But like, I'm so surprised I didn't like take an ACL or an MCL, no matter how many times I freaking tried practicing those jumps and those flips. It was just like I was on autopilot, man. It was just like freaking got to learn this stuff and just go and do it, you know. <laughs> I, was a, I was a fan of Airborne Mondo. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! The, freaking, the springboard bulldog over the top rope. Remember that? <laughs> oh yeah, of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't. Rem- I don't. For some reason, I don't. All I remember was us getting called up to TV, and at the time in Ohio Valley Wrestling, we were all doing different gimmicks. Um, I remember vaguely Elijah was supposed to be part of it and then he wasn't. Um, and I remember DX actually, or Hunter was actually saying something why like he was an idiot for turning it down. Uh, but in the long run, it ended up working out and he's, he's had a lot of success, but, um, I yeah. remember, yeah, they, they had us, uh, 
do something in the ring before TV. And I remember Big Show, uh, or I think, I, I don't remember. I remember Big Show. We were supposed to do our Titan Tron video. They, they put us in the ring. They're like, hey, you guys have the opening dark. Hit those fuckers with everything you got so we can film your Titan Tron video. And then, uh, and then, yeah, you guys are going to debut next week. And so I think we jobbed out some two locals, hit them with everything. Um, and they had me cut my hair. And I saved it and brought it back to High Valley Wrestling. I, mean, I did an angle with, I think, Cap, where I had my hair head shaved or something like that. Um, but after that, we were on the road uh, full time. And, you know, it was it was interesting, too, because, you know, obviously I, I knew Ken, I knew Mondo, I knew Nemeth, you know, um, more or less. I, I mean, well enough, you know, as colleagues know each other, you know, and I, I'd hung out probably I knew you more than anyone else, Mondo. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, we were a tag team. And, and when you come with a tag team, you know, there's you're almost like brothers, right? You may bicker here and there, but, you know, we we definitely had to learn how to work together quickly. And I think we did a really good job of that. Um, but yeah, and I, I think also, too, it probably wasn't something that we all envisioned ourselves in when we before we got signed with we like you always imagine yourself like oh i want to be the, the, the cool cocky arrogant heel or i want to be you know uh you know the young fiery baby fit, whatever it is however you imagine yourself in wb being a male cheerleader isn't the first thing that comes to mind when someone <laughs> says i want to go to wwe <laughs> but you kind of just you embrace it and you know hey you know what after this runs its course uh i can do whatever i want you know or they'll fire me you know but ultimately let's let's just enjoy the enjoy the moment let's uh let's make the most of it while we're here and uh i feel like we did i mean there were, i have i look back very fondly on the spirit squad we had some great matches great memories both in the ring in the locker room traveling uh and what we got to work with i mean god sean hunter flair piper um dusty road i mean dude there, it, the list was kane you know to, big show the, the the list was endless um and so yeah no we had a we we had a we had a great time i went back and uh, watched the roles after wrestlemania 22 and you were literally all over the show, like start, middle, and like main events all over the show. So, and the, to me, the gimmick was a great gimmick. People hated the gimmick and they kept booing you. But you were like all over the place. How much involvement did Vince McMahon have in that? Mm, I don't, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember Vince really ever speaking to us outside of WrestleMania 22, the pre, like right at every WrestleMania match, they have the conference hall and there's like security guards. You go in there and I think Sean was wrestling Vince and they had already yeah. gone over their match and we went in there and Vince was like, you guys ready for WrestleMania? And we're like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Hey, so then, <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, cause when you, in Ray, like, you know, like when you, you walk in the halls, like, you know, Vince is so business. Like, you know, you, you shake everyone's hands, obviously, you know? So you're like, you know, and every time you see him, he's, you're, you're like, hello, sir. He's just like, Johnny, you know, or hello. Half the time I didn't even know if he knew my name. But uh, I asked Dr. Tom one time, I'm like, yo, does he even know who the, who the fuck we, any of us are? <laughs> and and Tom, Tom was like, he knows who every single one of you are. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, as far as what we did at Raw uh, or any, or any pay-per-views, I, it was always filtered through through the agents and the agents would communicate what he wanted. So uh, our interaction with Vince, aside from WrestleMania, from what I remember, uh, was very minimal. But we did do stuff on TV where we hoisted them up all that stuff, but it, it, yeah, it was more just practicing that stuff before the show started, but, but that was it really, I think, unless you remember something I don't, you know, Mondo. No, I just remember dealing with a certain writer every time. I remember when you were working on top, I've learned that you kind of get the phone call to give you the heads up on like what you're doing, uh, that, you know, so you can kind of prepare for a little bit. I knew it was a lot different than working more on the undercard where you're going in there with not knowing what you're going to do, you know, you just kind of figure it out when you get there. But it was always a certain writer that was always keeping in touch with us. And like you said, the agents. Um, we didn't really, jo was that the jo Joseph? Was he always telling us? Yeah, the Joseph. Yep. Mm -hmm. and that was the main writer. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what it did. What, what, you know, but you pretty much hit everything on uh, on the head here. You know, definitely a good yeah. run at the time. And how long, uh, how long did the whole run last? Was it about a year? I would say it's about yeah. nine months. Nine months. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I want to know both you guys' feeling on, because I can remember this, when we had to send send them back to OBW box on Raw. Oh, yeah. How did that make you feel? Yeah. You want to take that one, Mondo? Yeah, okay. man. I mean, I, no, I get asked that a lot, actually. It's one of those things. And I remember very vividly, like, uh, 
I remember Eric Hunter kind of proposed it to me like as a joke. He was like, hey, yeah, uh, because originally the sign was supposed to say Tijuana. I don't know if you remember that, Gina, or not. But I don't, I don't uh, remember that. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter thought it was funny. He goes, he wouldn't be kind of funny because it would us the shits if we put on the sign uh, back to OVW. And here I am, you know, kind of just happy. Uh, good you idea, know, Hunter. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, again, I think if I was a little more, had more maturity under my belt and, you know, was uh, a little older, I probably would have, I wish I would put my foot down a little bit more and be like, no, man, because the illusion is that we're all going to be in there. And it doesn't, I mean, yeah. Mitch will be in there, but it just doesn't matter because the illusion is that we're all going, you know, back to OVW, and that's kind of like a shot on us. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, and uh, it's one of those things that's happened too fast to really think about it. Mondo, I would pay to see you retrospectively have that conversation again with Hunter when Hunter says, "Hey, Mondo, wouldn't that be funny if we put an OVW sticker there?" You say, <laughs> "Good idea, Hunter. I like where you're going with that, but I'm thinking." Mm, <laughs> I think yeah. what's going on for direction <laughs> just to see his straight face not wanna. putting it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember being on the road and Hunter hated Mitch, Nick Mitchell, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he like hated him. No one, no, no. Wow. Well, he, man, that guy no. could make everyone laugh. Like Mitch, yes. for all, for all his, I mean, you know, look at, I feel like to earn respect in wrestling, like it's one, you have to pay your dues Two, know how to work three, pay your respects to everyone, shake everyone's hand, be a good dude. And I guess, also, and also too, know how to communicate, like know when to shut your mouth and know and keep your ears open and then know, have the confidence to speak up too. But I think uh, with Mitch, he didn't have the experience. And so that inherently made people not respect him enough, but you know, some of his redeeming qualities, I mean, he, he, and he was in a tough spot, right? If WWE says, hey, let's, we're, we want to sign you, put you in a tag team, like, I, I don't care what anyone says. They would do exactly what Mitch did, right? But again, he, and I, Mondo, I don't remember. Like, I, I feel like when, did, did, he, did Mitch ever get in the ring and try to learn how to work, like, when we were on the road? I remember he, we, we he would get in the ring every day. He house shows for a little bit. He would get in there with Nemeth and roll around a lot. Okay. And stuff, you know, at the beginning of house shows. But we're talking, you know. 20 minutes or something like that just to right. try to learn a couple things here and there you know and but right. don't, don't, don't forget he was injured most of the time remember he had the acl injury and then he rode a motorcycle and crashed yes. and burned and had those scabs <laughs> all over his back hold on can we where... could we could we tell that story really quick so yes. so the, the mitch story was mitch so mitch shows up to tv with a white under armor you know, shirt on, right? Pus, and his back coming through it. Pus, but like, but again, yeah. I think someone went up to him like, "What up, Mitch?" They slapped him on the back, and Mitch goes, <laughs> and, then, "And we're like, we're like, the fuck? What's wrong with you?" And he's like, "Oh man, I got, I, I got, I got road rash." So apparently, he was he, he he was trying to impress some chick. He picked her up from the airport, but he had like his buddies driving in an SUV, and he was showing off on his motorcycle while she was in the car next to him. So he's like trying to Indo and shit or do whatever. Well, he ends up just flying over the top, road rashes the shit out of his back and uh, <laughs> ends up just getting fucked. But he, he didn't tell any of us. So he comes to TV and he had this thing and like, oh my, imagine your whole back's road rashed and you're coming to TV. You don't tell anyone because I think in Mono and actually Renee, you, you guys know, like I think the biggest fear for all of us being backstage was like saying you're hurt, right? Oh, my ACL's fucked. Oh, I can't wrestle. I'm sick. I have the flu, which by the way, I shit my pants when Big Show choked on me one time because I had the flu at a show and I was praying to God Dean Malenko didn't pick me for that match that night. Um, but like you, you don't want to say anything because you want to be a trooper. Like, Hey, I can work. Like I missed my sister's wedding. Like Johnny Ace was like, you know, I know your sister's wedding, but you want to go to South Africa, you know, on the tour with, with SmackDown, this was post squad. And I didn't want to say no, because like, who am I to say no to go on there? Cause he, what if I said no? And Ace judges me and goes, Oh, I guess Jeter doesn't want it. You know what I mean? So I think for all of us, we, we were very scared to say, Oh, I'm hurt or anything like that. So I think Mitch had that mindset and he didn't want to tell anybody about it. Yeah. Yeah, we were definitely a boy in a man's world at the time, you know, I mean, oh these God. were like yeah. a lot of grown men around us, you know, and uh, it was just different, you know, we were like, we were young, you know, what we, I know I was 22, 23, you know, we were the same age, Jeter, you know, Nemeth is probably a couple of years older, you know. Were you, and born, we were you born, Mondo? You were 85? What's that? 
When were you born? 83. 83. Oh, same as me, dude. Yeah, man. Are you 38? 38, yeah. Yeah, me too. He's like, I, he's like I'm 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, let's... Um, so post uh, Spirit Squad, they, they send you back to OBW in the crate. Uh, where does it go from there? For me... Go ahead, Mondo. There you go. Yeah, no, for me, uh, it actually, uh, we started. I think you went singles, Jeter, for like for a little bit. You were babyface. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to, I went, to, I went to the raw raw. I went to, sorry, I went to the SmackDown brand, and they changed my name to Jaden because Britney Spears had just had her kids, and they take the, all that stuff from pop culture. There was right. too many Johnnies. They told me so. Go, oh, her son's named Jaden. Oh, word, how about Jaden Jeter? So yeah, I, I ended up going singles to SmackDown. Um, and I think you and you and Nemeth were going to do like a fraternity gimmick. And yeah, I think Ken, was Ken was going to say singles on Raw. And I think mm -hmm. Mitch just got fired. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, and he just disappeared. I think he lives in Jerusalem now. He's like, uh, yeah, it's a shoot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Jerusalem? Yeah. They a, they yeah a like that. That. He's like a pastor or something now, too. Like he oh, lives well. in Jerusalem. Yeah, he really like changed and converted his life, and uh, definitely like um, found a new way and stuff. So um, I know he hit me up on Instagram. This was like six months ago, and uh, you know I, it was just kind of like high and by or nothing too much. I wonder if it was really him or not, but I, I really the, the last I heard he was in Jerusalem. Crazy! Wow. Holy shit! Wow! <laughs> but, hey, hey, that, that's cool. I, I, but like, whoa! Wow! <laughs> Yeah. Gia, how does it feel being the Jim Cornette's favorite wrestler? Because every time I listen to Cornette's show, he just loves you and he keeps saying you're the biggest superstar who had the most potential. He keeps saying, "Who oh, about who said who said that about me?" Uh, yeah. Wow. No, that that's a huge compliment. I I I don't know Cornette man. He he opens so, and I'm sure it's Mondo for Mondo too. Like I mean, without Corn without Jim Cornette and Danny Davis, like I wouldn't have had the career I had. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. They opened so many doors for me, um, you know, and uh, I'm I'm forever grateful. Uh, and I, I it means the world to me that that I mean because he could say anybody, and the fact that he says that uh, you know means a lot to me. So yeah, I'm very humbled with him um, saying that. You know, I need to I need to listen to his podcast more. Uh, when I when oh, I left wrestling, I I disconnected like completely, and now that I'm I'm kind of getting back into it, like uh, you know, I I just need to find the time. I'm just so busy with work and school and everything, and like to sit there and listen to to podcasts. It's a uh, you know long pot. It's 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 tough for me to find the time, you know, because I got my wife and a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, but yeah, I need to I need to check out that. That's awesome that he just says that. Cool. Actually, oh. um, saw you as a few. Well, it's a long time ago now. Uh, I think it was 06, uh, November time. And it was in the Nottingham Arena. And uh, you was, uh, that week, I think, you just dropped the tag titles to uh, Piper and Flair. And the night I saw you, you was in like an eight-man tag. I think it was Piper, Flair and uh, the Highlanders, I think, if I remember it right. But what was it like working with Piper and Flair? Because I'm sure you got a story on one of them too. <laughs> Mondo, do you remember when... Uh... We worked Flair and I think, yeah, I think it was Pipe. No, sorry. This, this is a Flair story, um, but it was Flair and a Hunter. And do you remember, do you remember that spot we would do where we put him in the figure four, someone would walk down the apron, draw Hunter. Then while Hunter ref would go to Hunter, come in. And then while the ref's back was turned, we would grab each other's hands to, after we put figure Flair in the figure four and kind of to, to apply more pressure to the floor. As soon as ref turned around, we let go. We would do it again, more pressure. Second time, third time, I think uh, Hunter would come in and, and break it up. Do you remember that spot we would do? Yes. Yes. So, so we did that. We did that for months on end. And then one night, I don't, I think we were overseas somewhere. I don't remember where we were, but, uh, I put Flair on the figure four and uh, same spot. I go to reach for like, let's say Mondo's hands. He's grabbing it. And uh, Flair sits up and goes, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, oh God, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we do it again. And then uh, next thing you know, so we do the whole spot. We get to the back. Oh, he, second time. He's like, you're fucking up big tonight. And I was like, holy shit. Flair's telling me I'm fucking up big tonight. Anyway, we get to the back. And, uh, you know, he's like, oh, we're all good shit, blah, 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 blah. Then Flair comes over. He's like, kid, what are you, what are you doing out there? I'm like, I'm sorry. I just thought, you know, 
the hands, the pressure, you know, but what do I do? No, I'm sorry. What, 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 what should I have done? And, uh, <laughs> and Flair's like, hey, it's okay. He's like, he's like, you draw Hunter, ref goes to him. He's like, grab the rope, more pressure. And I was like, no shit. Like, All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> In my head, I'm thinking, I mean, it's the same concept, grabbing my tag team partner. Right. So, but, but hey, yeah, fuck yeah. All right, yeah, okay, I won't right. make that mistake again. And then uh, as, as, soon as, Flair, again. as soon as Flair walks away, Hunter goes, he comes over and he goes, uh, guys, he's like, we all know he's the greatest in the world, but I get it. Right, right. <laughs> and I think, yeah. Actually, that wasn't the first time Hunter said something like that to us. Mondo, were you there when uh, Jake the Snake came up to us? I think it was at Royal Rumble. We were sitting on the like the production crate, just like being in awe of what we were doing backstage. And then, um, <laughs> and then Jake the Snake comes over to us and he goes, guys, appreciate this shit. It's not going to last forever. And we're like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or we'll make sure <laughs> we do that, sir. And then he walks away. Hunter comes up. <laughs> He goes, guys, whatever he just said, do the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea what he said, but it was it just was funny. <laughs> whatever advice uh, he gave, do the exact opposite. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys. It's time for some Rip Rogers stories. I know you have them. We all have them. Oh, Rip Rogers. Mondo, let's start with you. Yeah. Rip Rogers. Damn. Rip Rogers, Whew, one of a kind. Best trainer, though. The yes. best trainer. Yeah. Freaking, yeah. you know, and uh, taught me definitely how to work. It was 60 minutes in a ring. Um, and chop around the <laughs> horn. He just, he, just, he just doesn't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck. He'll say whatever's on his mind. I got to think about it. I got to come up with some stories. You got any on top of your head, Jeter, for now? The only one that I can think of is... Uh... I mean, one, he kept telling me I was too skinny. So he'd be like, Junior, you need a protein bar. You, you need to eat. Go, go fucking eat. But dude, <laughs> at the time we were doing like five or six hour practices. I mean, dude, we, we would do the chain drill for an hour. Like we were burning a shit ton of calories. We were in our and early 20s. So, practice either. And that, yeah. So like, and I, I, I mean, again, we didn't, I think in NXT now they have, they have personal trainers, they have dietitians and all that shit. We didn't have any of that. So I was young and, and I was learning from different guys and different routines and all that stuff. But I remember uh, Melissa Coates was down there and there he's like, Jeter, you and Melissa, get in, it, get in there and have a match. You're the face, you're the heel, just go. And I think for us, like at some, at some point, like you're, we all, I mean, I think the, the thing of the OEW is if you're like, oh, you, everyone's a cookie cutter. You guys are all learning the same style. You guys are all working the same. You know, we want to see some, you know, be different, all that stuff. So anyway, we're in practice and we're, we honestly, half the time we were just trying to pop ourselves. So I get in there with Coates who, you know, what am I going to do? You know, so I was like, well, what are her strengths? And I was like, well, she's a fucking bodybuilder. I know she can pose. So I get in there and I do start doing like a pose off, you know, like, you know, <laughs> and then she... <laughs> And then she would do it. And then she, and then she, as soon as she posts, I'd be like, oh, shit, you know, like <laughs> bump, go to the outside of the ring, get pissed off. <laughs> and then I think at some point she put, and then she ended up hip tossing me, dropped it or, or clotheslining me, and I'd powder out. Anyway, Rip didn't let us finish the match. He, he just goes, what, Jeter? What the fuck was that? And I, <laughs> I look at us like, you know, we're I'm working the gimmick. She's a bodybuilder. He's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked me out. Of the, he wouldn't even let me finish the match. He just kicked me oh, out. <laughs> you know what he used to do? Like when Nick and uh, Davinja and Conway, when they were just starting out, if their match was the shits, he'd come out with like a hook and like hook them out. Yeah, <laughs> in the middle of their match, <laughs> start beating the fuck yeah. out of him with a baton. There's a shit. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, that would that wouldn't that doesn't surprise me. Actually, yeah. when you said Conway, I just imagined his little bobblehead going like, you know, <laughs> gonna shoot a guy off. Yeah. <laughs> Mondo, did you think of any of rip stories? Man, off top top of my head. I just remember what a, just what a great coach he was, man. Just like he loved kind you, of Mondo. got you over prepared. 
Like, I mean, I learned, uh, like, that's when like, the, the light bulb kind of went off for me for the first time. Like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be done. Psychology and storytelling and working a body part, wrestling yeah. with a body part, getting heat on a body part, telling stories throughout that transitions when, when you, you know, getting heat on a guy and stuff like that. And uh, let's talk about, like, someone that just made me, like, learn how to do, like, less is more and get the most out of doing nothing, yeah. you know? Um, but he was always, like, very, um, like, he was a hard ass, but, you know, like, he was a hard ass because he cared he and coach. um you know he was a coach exactly you know yeah. but he would yeah. always explain to you like why you did wrong like he would never just leave you hanging and uh tell you how to do it properly and correctly and then you know he always would say it's okay to make the mistake but never make the same mistake twice you know mm-hmm. so um but yeah no, I, I mean i've done probably honestly no joke like probably 18 like hour broadways with him he would just <laughs> <laughs> yeah holy <laughs> shit like, Chris Cage is my first hour Broadway, and then from there it was just like a marathon. It was Mondo yeah. get the ring with so and so. You go in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I remember like, those. Oh, I, re- I remember you know? those practices, but we would show up and like we all had a feeling the hour Broadway was coming, and we had no idea who Rip would pick. So when Rip would come over, and all of us would kind of be like. You know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I know you're don't make eye contact. <laughs> don't make eye contact. And, uh, but but yeah, yeah, but no, those I practices, remember. those practices started like at seven in the morning or eight in the morning, right? We had to eight, be there eight in the seven. morning. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight to like twelve or one, and they, I they remember were, when I did my practices. I did mine with Nova, right? And at the time, I was dieting, right? I was doing low carb because uh, the office said I was getting a little weight. I was getting fat. So, you know, with my OCD, I started fucking doing like zero carbs and I was doing an hour of cardio in the morning before practice. Oh my God. So I was, I did my hour, my hour of Broadway on no fucking calories, no carbs, no nothing. Man. Oh man. Jesus. Oh, yeah. R- Renee, I mean, how long, yeah. how long, how long were you at OVD? I don't remember you being there too. You went there for maybe a, a, less than a year and then you got called up, didn't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got there in August. I debuted on TV in September and I was already on the road by like March or April of the following year, like six wow. months. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was the whole, the whole war, right. With the, with the Afghanistan, Middle East, yeah. Afghanistan and the French yeah. not wanting to participate. So yeah. Conway did his thing too. And then you guys, or no, you were with Sylvan, Sylvan Grenier for a little bit. Yeah. And then you went to Conway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we didn't like each other. And then that's when they brought in Conway. And then, uh, gotcha. uh, so, why didn't you? Why didn't you and Sylvan get, get along? Uh, I was I was young and hard headed, and he was sly, you know. <laughs> yes, sly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we get along great now, though. We actually get along great now. So me and the sly are actually talking about doing some some stuff together. What about you two, Spirit Squad? You guys, are you guys up for it? Mondo, yeah. you'd be down for it. I'm, I'm always down for it. Unfortunately, right now, my wrestling career is on pause because uh, I have blood clots in my right leg. And um, I was diagnosed with that um, four months ago. And right now they put me on blood thinners. And uh, so I can't do anything like physical, like right now for the next uh, couple months. And then luckily all the sonograms have been coming back positive and stuff like that, that they're shrinking. And then I'm starting to you know, get a lot better. But uh, it was pretty bad at one point, man. Kind of like a little bit of a scare. But um, so unfortunately, I haven't been doing anything in the ring as of late. But in a couple months, I'm going to be getting off this medication because everything, as long as everything keeps going the way it's supposed to be going, and then uh, I look forward to definitely getting back in the ring. You know, absolutely. You know, and I would love to have you, Jeter, again. Oh man, that'd be I'd, I'd fucking love it. And you know I, what? I, go ahead, Renee. Sorry, you know what the people want to see? They want to see the Spirit Squad versus La Resistance because it never happened. Yes. Bro, I, that'd be fucking awesome. Uh-huh. I would love that. <laughs> uh, we're brainstorming here. And now yeah. that, okay, wait, hold on. Mitch, okay, Mitch is Mitch is uh he's a monk in Jerusalem now, so he's out of the picture. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Nick Nicky Nemet, he, he he's got a job for life in New York. Uh, Kenny Doan, is he he's got a job in New York too, right? He's in NXT, he's a trainer. Well, no, fuck uh, it, let's agent on the road now. Well, guess oh, what? Elijah oh, Burke. Right. Elijah yeah, Burke really was well. supposed to be. Elijah Burke was supposed to be a Square Scar member, Spirit Squad member. So let's dress him up in the fucking suit. It'd be you three against me, Conway and Sly. See, promoters, are you listening? See. Remind me to tell you some funny stories about Elijah. Uh, I don't know if we could do him on the podcast, but, <laughs> but there's. Sure, why not? 
Come on. Right. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, he's probably going to hate me for this. Uh, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> was kind of funny. Oh man! Oh, oh, oh. So, so I I was when I work as an IT audit manager at this company, and I was traveling, uh, and so I went to Louisville. And while I was in Louisville, I stopped by Ohio Valley Wrestling. Blah blah blah. Checked it out. Well, that was when Capitelli was not doing too well, and so I got in touch with Nova, Mike Bucci. And we ended up going over to Capitelli's house. We got in touch with his wife and we went there. So I was there and uh, um, his parents were there. She was there like Cap and Cap couldn't speak, right? Like he could understand what we were saying. And I think he was super happy that myself, Nova and actually, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Pope arrived, uh, Elijah Burke, sorry, I couldn't think of his name, Elijah Burke arrived. Um, so it was the three of us just la laughing, telling stories, just trying to, you know, just kind of add some light to the, you know, because I think it was a very heavy demeanor in that house. You know what I mean? Like they're dealing with some heavy stuff. And, you know, so we just tried to kind of make everyone laugh a little bit, tell some old stories and, and do that. Um, <laughs> Oh, Pope Burke starts going on and on about his boxing career uh, down in wherever <laughs> he was from and uh, how he was in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, and here's my ring. I'm in the Boxing Hall of Fame, blah, blah, blah. And then and Nova and his Cavs parents and, you know, it, we're all, everyone's just going, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, Boxing Hall of Fame. No shit. Uh, <laughs> and then he's he starts telling another story and he's like, yeah, so I'm blah, blah, blah. He's like, hold on a second. Lindsay, do you think Capitelli wants to hold my Hall of Fame ring? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> so, Cat, oh, I mean, and again, uh, Capitelli was one of, my, one of my best friends there. We tagged. I love him to death. Um, so it was heartbreaking to see him like that. But, but I was also glad that he could have a good time. But if I was Cap and I, and I know he could speak, I think he probably would have rolled his eyes at that guy. <laughs> Because Lindsay, even Lindsay was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> so she grabs the ring, goes over to Cap, opens Cap's hand, and puts Elijah Burke's Hall of Fame boxing. <laughs> and Cap's just sitting there. We're looking up like, hey, you know, like <laughs> power, brother. Yeah. And bro, bro I, I don't think in the pre in the presence of someone like cap in his condition i haven't met anyone in my life who could talk as much as elijah <laughs> <laughs> but hey i love i love elijah he was the greatest he was fun i'm just poking fun at him but uh right. Right. you know nova and i left we're like wow, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> yeah. mondo uh well, it's like coming, uh, going back in 2016. Uh, you and Kenny went back for the Sigler and Miss angle. Yeah, man, that was really cool. And it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, remember, I was in a baby shower or whatever, and I got a text from Ziggler saying, like, hey, Kate Fade, but the office is going to call you to come to TV in two days. And it's just like, what? You know, like, just like that, you know, just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I want to say originally they tried to get the band back together, but it just worked out where me and Kenny were available. So um, originally it was supposed to be a one-off and uh, we just come in, do the deal with Ziggler, uh, get over on him or whatever, something with the Miz. And then that, that would be it. But then, uh, you know, Vince thought the angle got over really well. And the writers were, uh, the writers actually didn't even know who we were because they were all like, guess, brand new. Like, I don't think yeah. they remember from 2006 or something like that. And uh, it was just like, oh yeah, like, you know, we do something with you guys so we ended up coming back for the pay-per-view we did a run-in for the pay-per-view from there it just kind of spiraled from us coming to tv um for another couple of weeks i want to say it kind of ran for almost a month and then uh just like that you know i and i don't know why but i remember it was we had like a i never been in a 14-man tag match before but anyway it was a 14-man tag match it was yeah absolutely ludicrous and um i don't know i just had a gut feeling that you know that something you know didn't feel right that this is kind of maybe coming to an end now because kind of like hit a stale point and sh sure enough that was the last show uh no no email no uh phone call no text message we just kind of 
we just kind of figured out that was it. You know, we tried to be proactive and stuff about it. You know, um, I know Kenny sent them uh, and Stephanie an email. Uh, I was talking to the writers, trying to get something sparking again. Cause you know, when you're on the hot seat like that, you want to kind of keep things rolling once things are going and you don't want to be out of sight, out of mind, lost in the mix. That's like the worst spot to be. So we figured, you know, we were on contract the whole time, which is very weird. Right. So they must've had a lot of trust in us because when we were on live TV. They gave us a microphone, you know, we had no, uh, no, no deal whatsoever. And I want to say, um, it was Kyoto that was like, that's really like unheard of. Like usually everyone's like signed under paper, never really is someone non-contract going to like a TV angle or TV. So that was kind of like, they must've put a lot of trust in us, which is cool. You know, like I like to have that working relationship with them because I want them to trust us. But uh, yeah, just, um, just one of those things where I guess it kind of ran its course and that was it, you know, uh, but turned a one off. So Yeah. Plus that exposure probably gave you a couple of couple of months with their indie bookings, right? Oh no, it did great for us on the indies. All of a sudden we were getting booked everywhere. We went to England, we went to Australia a couple of times. Um, we were going all over the place and we were definitely pretty steadily booked. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, my TV, good. man, my TV is strong. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Didn't you do some work in the uh, Chicago, was that right? Yeah, uh, Cheetah was involved in that match too. Yeah, we did uh, King of the Trios. That's and nice. yeah. uh, did a little one-off there. That was a very unique, unique match. Every diff different atmosphere, different style there. But uh, we got through and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Who'd you guys wrestle? Uh, like, randos, right? Yeah, it was like a sports team that we faced. Like one like guy was a football player, a baseball yeah. player. They had you know different gimmicks unique uh, stuff yeah i've got some strange gimmicks in that company <laughs> they've got like yeah. ninja turtles is that right yeah. something like that <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, yeah i don't yeah two randos I, I i forget who they were but yeah that was my first time in the ring in a long time and i, I just relied on on mondo and, and kenny for that because i mean I no, was, you were great man you freaking held uh, your own you know, you were I tried, in there. But but you guys were <laughs> you guys were one thousand percent seasoned. I, I it'd be like, you know, you taking time off and then getting back in the ring and having to go. And I hadn't run any drills, done any practice and anything. I mean, I was working out in the gym, but I not not the way I was when I was wrestling. But so Did that you blow was, up uh, at all or no? I don't remember blowing up, but I just remember just feeling a little out of sync. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, it just, you kind of need a, a match or two or some practice to kind of get your, you know, get, get, get the feel of it. Right. Um, yeah. But I, I remember when you guys uh, did the TV thing, I, I got a call from, uh, from uh, Carano actually, and I was driving back from Arizona to California and he asked me if I could do the spirit squad thing. And he said, could be one day, could be six months. There's no, no idea, but do you want to do it? Um, the first thing was in San Diego, I think is where it was. <clears throat> and he's, I said, well, I'll talk to my wife. Let me get back to you in, in an hour or two. Well, I knew the company I work, cause I work in it audit. The company I worked for the time was Deloitte and Touche, who are the external auditors for WWE. So I knew there could have been some compliance issues or, um, some, uh, conflict of interest, um, things. So I called our compliance department and just asked them if, if working for WWE would be an issue. And they said, because they're in a test client and a restricted entity, you can't perform any paid or unpaid services for WWE. And so I got some partners at Deloitte involved. And I said, well, I'm not a manager on the account. I'm not invested in the company. Um, there's no financial conflict of interest there, you know, for me, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's not like I'm going to influence the, the, the audit in any kind of way um, or the opinion that's issued by the company. So, uh, but yeah, no, they said, they sent me a long list of all these SEC guidelines and then I was like, all right, I guess I'm not going to do anything. So I ended up not, not being able to do it, but, uh, but I was a fan. I'm glad you guys had that opportunity to do it. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool to get back out there again. And, uh, you know, my mom was um, battling cancer too at the time. So like, you know, it's always been like one of her really, you know, she, she knew I love wrestling and always want to see me back out there and on the big stage again. So she got to get that one last glimpse before, you know, she passed away and stuff of me being on the big stage again. I know that made her really happy and stuff. So a lot of personal feelings in that, you know, that little run for me, you know, besides that's, business. That's cool. Quick question. Um, what was it like back there? Because I feel like, Renee, you could probably relate to this. I felt like we were the old guys. 
Because we were, the, I feel like we were always walking on eggshells back there. Oh, you ate the last chicken breast and Taker comes in the catering. You're fucked. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, <I'm pretty> <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's, yeah. it, that's, that's the way it felt. We were there. You're walking on eggshells. You're all friends. You're all one big fraternity. But like, I feel like there's guys, oh, jealous of your spot. Um, <laughs> I, it's, I, I don't know. So I, I feel like I, I never felt comfortable. I always felt like I had anxiety at TV uh, because I just never, even though we're all friends, even though we earned our spot, I never felt a thousand percent comfortable back there because yeah, I, I knew that I knew that stuff could end like that. Um, yeah. So was it, I mean, watch all the matches, shake everyone's hands. Like, oh, if they work an arm in the first match, you shouldn't work an arm in the second match. You know what I mean? Don't do too much in the first match. The show's got to build up to the main event, you know, because how are they going to follow? Like all that stuff. Like if you left the TV area, what hung out in the locker room, like you were almost like ostracized for that. Like you were ridiculed and they, they would, they would give you heat in the locker room and no one would tell you why, but you know, so that's what I remember in that locker room. What was it like when you were there? Yeah, man, it was just, you know, it was a lot different. Like it was a lot more. I think it's because we've been through the whole the whole thing once before. You know? And like you said, we've been that feeling of walking on eggshells and stuff like. And I don't know. I think it's just because we got that experience. I think it wasn't so much. It didn't feel that way this time around. And also, I think besides like Randy Orton, like John Cena. You know, Daniel Bryan, like, you know, um, we, we were kind of like the most experienced guys up there and everybody else wow. like got in the business before us, you know, like, so it almost felt like we were like the old guys a little bit, you know what I mean? And everyone but, like, was super, I didn't everyone have a problem was super taking cool. a chair if I wanted a chair. Yeah, yeah. super, super cool. And um, just, just, just a different atmosphere, man. Like, I don't know if it's just the direction WWE has taken, you know, being a publicly traded company and everything, but everything seemed more toned down. Like ribbing was unheard of. Like no one would. You can't do you that know, shit now with HR. You can't do that shit anymore. So everyone's kind of like everyone just felt like that. The, everyone's like on their best behavior, you know. And uh, you know, it's just um, it didn't have that tension that I had like the first time around. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So, James, you I know exactly where you're coming from. Sorry. Uh, yeah, a couple. Uh, I suppose one I'll ask, uh, what does it feel like for yourself seeing the career Nemeth has had of Sigler and becoming world champion and stuff? I think it's I think it's fucking awesome. Like I I I'm glad, especially anyone that's I'm I'm partial to OVW guys, especially because yeah. like I feel like we were we were all kind of each other's family it's almost like that show friends right like you're you're in your 20s like you don't we weren't married we didn't have like kids you know what i mean and and we were away from our our own families so you become your friends become your family right and we were around each other so much that you develop bonds and relationships so anytime anyone from ohio valley wrestling succeeds up there uh i just it it makes me feel good because i'm glad i I and maybe this is bad to say, but I feel like they WB wasted a lot of talent. I think there was a yeah. lot of talented guys that that they didn't utilize or or capitalize on. Um, so and you know, but that's that's life, that's business, you know, and we're all adults, that's that's just what happens. But um, any guys that do succeed, I it it makes me feel good because uh I know they're I know they can work, I know Nemeth's a good dude, and I'm so ex- I'm so happy that he's found the success that he has, and he's fully capable, man. That that dude is a workhorse. So yeah, super happy for him, and fully capable, and and definitely makes me happy that he's up there still after all this time. Yeah, Mondo. So if it does Ziggler's you secretly want to want success and stuff like that. <laughs> you secretly have a picture of him that you fucking throw a dart side every night. Oh <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> man, he's all. No, no, no. I, I think Ziggler like. I think Ziggler like going from the from the from the get go. I remember when he first came in with Bobby Lashley for his OVW tryout, and uh, he was put in my uh, non contract class too for a little bit. So I had a little hand in training him as well. And, um, and he just worked, you know, he just, just a natural athlete, you know, he had a natural mind for the business. He knew how things were supposed to be, you know, yeah. and I think it was just him. I think the Spirit Squad run was a blessing in disguise for him because I think that gave him the experience to be able to catapult himself now to the next level because 
there's a big difference when you're working on the top of the card and the bottom of the card, you know, we kind of did all of that, you know? And so now it's like, we had that main event experience and everything. And I think he just took it. And when he got the ball handed to him, he just kind of ran with it, you know, uh, reinvented himself. And I think he was put in position where he got to work with a lot of great workers at the very beginning of his career, like edge, um, Batista, you know, he, um, he worked with Hunter for a little bit. Um, and then of course with the squad run with all the guys that we got to wrestle, he really got a lot of valuable experience. So, and he's no dummy, you know, he's a very smart man. So yeah, I think he really, um, you know, definitely took that and used it to most of it to his advantage and became the performer that he is today. Yeah. What was, uh, <laughs> what was Kane and Big Show's reactions to when it was told that they was putting news over for the titles? Um, I don't think they minded, to be honest. I think what they did mind, because you remember the match after uh, the next week, Jeter, when we had the rematch, and I think it was you and Nemeth were in there, and they just it was no, like it, it was a five on two against Kane and Big Show. Was are you talking yeah. about the, the 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 sandwich incident? Yeah, that's yeah, what it was the sandwich incident. So, yeah. so <laughs> they didn't mind putting the belts on us, but they. They did mind the same with the incident. I don't think I don't think Kane mind. I think Big Show minded a little, uh, but but the following week at TV, yeah, I think it was Mitch and Kenny got the I- smart idea. Hey, let's put a subway sandwich in the middle of the ring with a with a rope with a fucking lasso. I don't even know where the fuck they got that rope, but was, they were like, it was a microphone do- cord. Oh, it was a microphone cord or something. So they're like, as soon as like one of them goes to grab it, we'll pull it and hook their leg. So <laughs> I just remember thinking like when they brought this idea, because we didn't run this by anybody. And then, but, but I think Ken or Mitch told it to us. And we we're like, I remember thinking, this is a fucking bad idea. Like this is not a, a horrible idea. idea. It, was it was a was fucking like, horrible idea. It was one like, of those common sense things you just don't do, especially when where we are. They're fucking <laughs> veterans. You don't, do, you just don't go rogue like that. Even if at a house show, we weren't up. We weren't like, we're not fucking main eventers. Like you don't do that um, or have the audacity to do something like that. So anyway, so we go out there, they do it. Uh, it <laughs> big, as soon as Kane gets to the ring, he sees it. He starts laughing. As soon as big show sees it, he gets like angry and he goes to pick it up. Well, they end up pull, we end up pulling it and it, it gets them. And it big show. It caught him. Big Show leans over the ropes and goes, every single one of you motherfuckers is dead. And oh, we just looked at each other like, who wants to start? <laughs> you know? yeah, that was a rough night. So he literally beat the shit out of everybody. But then I can and, and, and chime in, Mono, if anything, but I, this is just my experience. After the show, like, because I, I rode with Cena and Eugene, so, and Cena was the main event, so I always had to wait till the end of the show for Cena to shower. So I got out of there late. Well, Big Show was sitting in there at a, in a chair changing. And so I went up to him and I said, Hey man, like, I'm, I'm really sorry about tonight, blah, blah, blah. And, and he was pissed. He just said, you know, when I was, when I was younger, I was bullied as a kid because people thought I was overweight and my height, all that stuff. He goes, so you guys doing that trick brought up a lot of bad memories for me. And I was like, like, fuck, like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's the last, the last thing I would ever, I respect the shit out of you. Last thing I would ever want to do is offend you or upset you. I'm so sorry. He goes, it's cool. Jeter. He's like, don't worry about it but he had this like tone like he was gonna get me back right? right but i think by me apologizing over and over and over again this was none of you guys were there i think mondo you guys had all left i think he thought it was i was doing that because he thought it was my idea so i think the raw i think after that or something like that we had a match and he he beat the shit out of me on tv um and then after we got to the back i remember uh trevor murdoch actually like i remember being feeling very discouraged and trevor murdoch's like jeter he's like just you, you did good you took the beating like don't don't say anything don't get angry don't make a fuss out of it just take it and you know be good anyway i told eugene ended up going he saw what happened he ended up going to big show and said yo jeter wasn't the one that whose idea that was like he you know it wasn't him and then I think Big Show, and I ended up talking to Big Show afterwards, and I think he felt bad. He never apologized, but I think he felt bad. Um, and he took me, me, Umaga, and someone else to a, st- a steak dinner the following weekend, um, and he paid for it, which was good, uh, which was ni- very nice of him. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, 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 to me, I think as a veteran, 
I don't know if I would have done any, if I was big show, like I get if someone offends you, but back then hazing was a big thing and teaching lessons. And uh, that was the way he taught us a lesson. I don't think I, if I was him, I don't think I would have done that. I would have handled the situation differently, but that's just the way it went out. And for us, that's how we put food on the table. It's not like I'm going to go to fucking big show and go, you son of a bitch. Like, how dare you fucking put my, you know, my career on the line or my job on the line or that my health and safety on the line by, by fucking legitimately beating me up in the ring like that on live TV. Like it's uh, I had a lot of, I had a lot of feelings about it, but it's not like you can voice that because, you know, I'm sure he had pull and I, what if I get fired? What if something happened? You know, I mean, who was I at the time, you know? So whose idea was it? I, I bet you it was Mitch's idea. That's something he would do. <laughs> I think it was Mitch and Kenny's, but Mondo, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm yeah, right. with the lasso, yeah. yeah Equally. Right uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh. Yeah. That's the past. Well, do we have anything else, James? I think we're all good tonight. Uh, do you want to sign off for me? <laughs> well, before we sign off, where can we find Mondo and Jeter? Tell everybody your information. Uh, Jeter, I know you have a wrestling school started up. Give them, tell everybody. Yeah. So, uh, well, my personal social media, you can find me on Jay Jeter 310 on Instagram or Johnny Jeter on Facebook. I also have a pro wrestling school in Northern California in Cameron Park, California called the Manicore Wrestling Academy. Um, you can find me there on at uh, actually Instagram, Manicore Wrestling Academy.com, Facebook, Manicore Wrestling Academy, or you can find me at the website, www.manicore Wrestling Academy.com. If you're interested in training in the NorCal area, come my way. Mondo, actually, fuck if you're once you know i get rocking and rolling man you are i know your mind for wrestling is fucking bar none um you know so i I, fuck if you ever want to come out here and and train with me i i'd love that because i think anyone would beneficial would benefit from your your mind for professional wrestling sure man no i appreciate that i love to absolutely be a good time you're okay too renee you know (laughs) (laughs) No, it's okay. I'm staying right here. My ass is staying right in the Maritimes. I'm not leaving anywhere, but uh, I'll be there in spirit. I would love for you to come by and come visit, man. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Trading, you're a trader like girl. You you have, you have a great mind for it, but I know you haven't been in the states in like a long time. So yeah, I know. I'm actually working on getting a, a work permit. Nice. Uh, maybe sometime in the next ten years. With this shit going on. Yeah, you're a very positive outlook, Aaron. Yeah. Very positive sight. <laughs> I just call it like it is. All right. <laughs> That's what happens when you're living in like you see how dark and red it is in there. Like yeah, I feel like I I'd be I I'd just be like going down rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> Mondo, give everybody your information where they can find you, dude. Oh uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook here, Mike Mondo. Uh you can also just check me out on Twitter and Instagram. It's the Mike Mondo or the Mike Mondo. So, uh, yeah, hit me up. And um, once I get this leg in order, be accepting wrestling bookings, seminars, autograph signings. Um, and you can contact me at MikeMondo at gmail.com. Uh, the Mike Mondo at gmail.com. So uh, that's some information right there for you. There we go. So for all the promoters out there and the fans, uh, the Spirit Squad, Mondo and Jeter are going to reunite. Uh, so book it, man. It'd be great. I'd love to see them again. On Let's the do it. Versus La Resistance. Versus LA <laughs> Resistance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, quick question before we go. Uh, yeah. So, I guess, would it be with you versus Sly? Or you and Sly? Or would it be you and Conway? Or would it be oh, Triple we Threat? Free, or what? We could do free bird rules with the Resistance, maybe, you know? Do you, know. Still, do you still keep in touch? I know you said it sounds like you keep in touch with Sly. Do you still keep in touch with Conway? Uh, we're actually going to do one of these, I think, next week with me, Sly, and Rob. Oh, so, awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I know, I, and I know we're going, but i just curious. Do you have any good Conway stories? <laughs> <laughs> any good Conway oh, stories? Conman. Oh, that I can say publicly on air? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If not, text me or give me an audio message. because I. I'll, oh, we, I'll, oh I'll, we definitely should do this again sometime because I had a lot of fun. A lot, a this lot. This was a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, James, what? Yeah, James, at your what? What time is it over there? It's probably like two in the morning, isn't it? Uh, five past one, so not too bad. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. yeah sometimes, I, like, sometimes I keep them up to like three in the morning. 
Well, boys, I want to thank you, and we'll keep in touch, okay? Hopefully we uh, see each other down the road, okay? Good All right, right, thanks for having us, buddy. All yeah, right, thank buddy. you. Take care of yourself. Good to see you too, brother. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.